Hi, welcome to what is not going to be a reading vlog. So I actually already filmed an intro to this at the beginning of the vlog, but I hated it because for starters, my skin was still quite messed up at that point. Also, at that point, I thought this was going to be a reading vlog, uh, but since I didn't really read anything while we were away on holiday, it really doesn't make any sense or fit with the rest of the vlog in any way. So we're gonna make a new intro and this is it. Basically, I'll show you a little bit of footage from Christmas and then the week following Christmas we did a road trip around the North Island of New Zealand where I live so I'll talk you through how that went. I will include some timestamps to different locations and the travel part of the journey if that's the only bit you care about and you don't care about the little bit of Christmas at the beginning which is now. This is the beginning. So firstly on the 23rd my sister and I went for a walk with her dog and also my cousin who lives down in Wellington so we haven't seen her for a little while and I accidentally bought a book for her for Christmas so I wanted to give it to her. It was nice to catch up and we did also see some baby pukekos and I'm pretty sure now I know where the pukekos hide their babies so I can find them anytime or at least any time that there's babies. Then on Christmas Day, we had my family's Christmas celebrations. We always open the presents on Christmas Eve, mainly because when my younger brother and sister were very young, we always had to go to my stepdad's place for family lunch, and it really frustrated us that we couldn't take some time to play with the toys that we'd gotten as presents, and so we started opening the presents the day before, and it's just stuck. The only thing that was sad about this year is that my brother has just moved to Sydney, so it was our first Christmas without my brother, but we did FaceTime him, so it wasn't quite as sad as it would have been if it wasn't for technology. We did also manage to get my sister's dog to open his presents, and then we watched Tangled, which is another family tradition, and we also watched Howl's Moving Castle, which I've never seen before, and I'm not entirely sure that I understood it, but I think I liked it. I think I need to read the book. Okay, so then on Christmas Day, I did actually start with my sister watching the TV series of Big Little Lies, and I've just remembered we need to continue that. I, it completely slipped my mind since we've been on holiday. But then in the afternoon, me and my partner Jace left on our road trip. Now, initially we were thinking about staying in Tekawiti, but we couldn't find anywhere there that wasn't a bit noisy because of Christmas parties so instead we ended up staying in this little tiny town called Pio Pio at this campground that only cost five dollars. Not the fanciest campground but it was all we needed. We went for a walk around the town. And we also made a nice little kitty friend. Then in the morning we went on a bushwalk and went to see a waterfall uh, in places that were very close to Pio Pio. And then after that we continued on to New Plymouth. which is a fairly big town in terms of small town New Zealand, a city, if you will. So in New Plymouth, we went to the Brooklyn Zoo, which we wanted to go to last time we were in New Plymouth, but it was closed. So luckily it was open this time. This jerk tried to poop on me, which was rude. But then the funniest part of this zoo experience was when we saw this little squirrel monkey and this little kid ran up and he said, Oh, it's Mickey Mouse! And his mother was trying to explain to him that it's not a mouse, it's a monkey. Uh, but the kid was just busy going squeak, squeak, squeak to the monkey, uh, convinced that it was Mickey Mouse. Adorable. This bird was cute, but 100% not to be trusted. Oh, jump. In what? In what? Uh -oh. Then we went exploring a little bit and amongst this city we did manage to find a weird little bit of country in the middle of it, which was kind of cool. Then once it was dark we went down to the New Plymouth Festival of Lights. It happens every year. It goes for a couple of months I think and it really is beautiful. It 
it was really great. They had some of the same old stuff they had previously, as well as some cool new lights. But I will admit that uh, right at the end of the night when the siren was going telling you to leave, we realized that there was a whole section of the park that we never went to. And we never went to it the previous time either. So maybe another time we'll have to go back to New Plymouth and try to catch that bit that we've been missing all this time. So then actually in New Plymouth, we ended up just staying on the side of the road, sleeping in the back of the truck. Probably not really allowed, but we didn't bother anyone. We didn't make a mess. So I think it was fine. I think the road we chose was pretty safe. We didn't die, so it was safe enough. Then in the morning, we went along the coastal walkway. Uh, New Plymouth has a beautiful coastal walkway. It's really long, really nice walk, really fancy bridge. And then we moved on to Opanaki, where there is this campground where you can camp for free right between the lake and the ocean. So first we went on a walk around the lake. This horse was very disappointed in us. We weren't feeding him nearly enough. And it was a bit windy on the ocean, so we didn't stay there for too long. But we did find this little library and I picked a very high quality book. And then in the morning we were on our way again. Uh, we stopped in a few different little random places. But the best was definitely Patia. It was incredibly windy, but because of that, the sea foam was amazing. Then we got to our next destination, which was Whanganui, another sort of decently sized town, kind of small, but it does have some really amazing art. Also, while we were there, we went to the very fancy Embassy 3 cinema, a cinema with three cinemas, and we went and we saw Star Wars. I'm actually really glad that we went to it in a smaller cinema because a lot of those movies, the sound effects are just so over the top, uh, but if you go to a kind of a small town theater, you don't have that issue, and you can just focus on the actual story. As far as Star Wars goes, I will say, like, there's a lot of valid criticisms of Star Wars, but I think if you don't take it too seriously and don't expect too much of it, it can be a lot of fun. Personally, I was just satisfied because there are horses riding on the top of a spaceship. That's all I wanted. I didn't know that that's what I wanted in my life, but that's all I needed, and I'm happy. So Whanganui is a very freedom camping friendly town. We stayed in this big area that they have put aside for freedom camping, so another free night. And then in the morning we went to see this really cool little children's playground. as well as this tunnel that goes through to an elevator to the top of this hill. It's, it was built in the early 1900s, so it's very old. Uh, we didn't go up the elevator. I'm kind of glad because I think it would have been a bit scary, but the tunnel was very echoey, so it was fun to explore. Then we left Whanganui. We stopped very briefly in Palmerston North, pretty much just long enough to go to Kmart and see. It's another fairly decent town, bigger than Whanganui, smaller than New Plymouth. Then when we continued on, we stumbled across this giant wind farm, so we stopped to have a look at that. Uh, it was very windy, probably not surprising. And then we got to a small town called Woodville. This also had some nice art and we stopped and got fish and chips. Then we headed out of town, went for a little bushwalk. And then stopped at another free campground. Now, this campground 
it was still incredibly windy. It started raining. We we're honestly sleeping in the back of the truck, thinking we were going to blow away because the wind kept shaking the truck. Uh, and when we woke up in the morning, things were very foggy and it was not the nicest weather. But we continued on and we managed to find some nicer weather. Uh, firstly, we stopped in this place that I don't know where it is, but there was this amazing crocheted granny square Christmas tree. It was amazing. Uh, we also stopped at these really beautiful wetlands. And then we got to Hastings where there was this star compass, which was pretty cool. And then we, I don't think we really stopped in Hastings. It's hard to remember, but then we moved on to Napier, which is very nearby. Napier is known as the Art Deco capital of the country. Um, they have their signage is all really weird, weirdly fonted. And they've got some art, but I tend to like the Whanganui art better. It's more my style. However, there is also a big aquarium in Napier. I think it used to have dolphins like a long time ago when that was kind of more acceptable. Now it probably also still has some really cool stuff, but the prices were a little bit high for us. As you can probably tell from all my camping descriptions, uh, we were going for the cheapest road trip we could. So we didn't go to the aquarium, but we did enjoy the art on the outside of the aquarium. And we also found this really beautiful flower garden just near there, which was also quite beautiful. Then we headed out of Napier and we went to this campground that we were hoping because it was sort of remote, might be fairly quiet. Instead, we found a city of tents, but it was still a really beautiful place, so I'm glad we went. We also went for a really nice walk up the hill because that was the only place where you could get mobile reception. Well, and because we just wanted to go exploring. So then we headed to Taupo, which is right in the middle of the North Island, where that little eye is on that unicorn reindeer that is the North Island. We did actually stop in Taupo briefly, but there were so many people that we didn't stay too long. I didn't take any footage. Uh, but then we headed up to the north of Taupo, not very far, where there is the Hooker Falls, which are amazing and so beautiful. Then we left Tucker Falls and we went to Craters of the Moon. Uh, personally, I would recommend if you go here, pick a day where it's not so sunny because it was so hot and there is no shade. But there were some really cool thermal geysers. Didn't really look like Craters of the Moon. I think back in the 1960s when this first opened, there was a lot less uh, bush and shrubbery. And so it looked more like Craters of the Moon with the cool smoke coming out. Not so much now, but it was still cool to see. I just, it's like an hour walk in the hot sun and I nearly died. Clearly, I'm not suited for life on the moon. So now we're up to New Year's Eve, and for New Year's Eve, we actually stayed in this old hotel uh, in Rotorua. So we headed up to Rotorua, and I didn't get any footage of the hotel, but it was kind of funny because it was massive, but it probably was a fancy hotel, but back in the 80s, and I don't think they've really done it up much since then. But we had a good time. We didn't do much. We had some waffles with ice cream. Isn't that all we really need for New Year's Eve? Then in the morning we headed to Tauranga and we found ourselves another really beautiful flower garden. went for a little walk around the city and then we headed up to Waihi because we had been told that there was a campground there that we would be able to stay at. But it turns out that we were misinformed, so we weren't able to stay there. Instead, we moved on to a little town of Onefero, where there's this little free campground between a big empty field full of cows and a rugby field. We did go for a walk around the block, and we found this very strange goat who kept doing a very strange thing with his head. And then in the morning 
we were woken up by some magpies, a little baby bothering its mother and her telling him off. And then finally, we just popped out to Port Waikato because we were near there and neither of us had ever been there before. So we thought, we better go and check it out. Uh, turns out there's not much there. Although we did see a kids fishing competition. So that's all. Then we headed home, I found my lovely little neighbor cat sleeping in my backyard and then we were able to have our holiday recuperation because you always need to rest a little bit after a holiday. I will say reading wise, uh, the one campground where it rained when we were staying there, I did manage to read about 50 pages of Call Down the Hawk. I don't know where I put it but I've ne now finished it since then. So I didn't quite finish it but I did get a tiny bit read. I did also listen to the audiobook of Traitor of the Throne, Traitor to the Throne by Owen Hamilton, which is part of the Rebel of the Sands series. Uh, I didn't really like it. I didn't think there was much to it. There was no plot. The characters' motivations didn't really make any sense. They kept having stupid dramas that didn't matter. Uh, and honestly, when the audiobook ended, I thought that Libby had just glitched and stopped playing because it wasn't an ending. It didn't make any sense for the book to end there. Nothing happened yet. I thought we were still building up to the climax, but it was the end, so hmm, I don't know. Anyway, that was our trip around the North Island. We will be going up the top bit, the horn of the magical unicorn reindeer, uh, in the next week, probably. Who knows when we'll get further down south, but I do love traveling around our little country, seeing what there is to see. So I hope you enjoyed what I had to show you. As always, thank you for watching. I hope that you had a really great week over Christmas and New Year's. I know it's not always great for everyone, but I hope you managed to make the best of things. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.